Let's let some people roll on. I'm gonna have a sip of my tea. Yes, so tonight, well, it's tonight here on the East Coast, I am bringing on Dr. Murphy, and we are gonna talk all about egg quality, whether or not you can actually improve it, and epigenetics. So um, it's gonna be a great conversation, I think, with a leading edge reproductive endocrinologist and myself. And for those of you that don't know, we'll wait for Murphy to um, pop on. Um, Dr. Murphy is a reproductive endocrinologist. He has practices in New York City, Long Island, and in Westport, Connecticut. And I myself am an acupuncturist and herbalist. I've been in private practice for 17 years. I also um, have studied Western medicine, neuroscience, um, yada yada. I wrote these books, um, namely this one, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. And Dr. Murphy and I are working together now in his Westport clinic and then soon in his New York City clinic as well that some of my acupuncturists, my fertility acupuncturists, will be seeing clients from his office. So we love working together. Um, I'm gonna, I see you've joined Dr. Murphy. So and you have to ask, you have to ask to join, I think. For, oh, did you? Let me see. Oh, you already did. Sorry. Sorry, I missed that. Anyway, here he comes. Um, I've I've seen Dr. Murphy already today. I gave him acupuncture this morning. Hi, Hi. I feel great. How are you? You feel good? I feel yeah, great. Thank you, for the, felt good? thank you for the acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I also I got I got you know some stuff done at his office today, and he got some acupuncture for me. So um, you made it home okay, right? You were just I, bet. I feel like I, just I was just there, and you were time. just there. <laughs> Uh, all right. Hi. So I, I told everybody that we're going to be talking about egg quality, whether or not we can actually improve it and how I guess, you know, it, it's linked to epigenetics, if you will. But um, we, we discussed this morning while he was on the acupuncture table, what we were going to talk about today. And um, I think obviously epigenetics and egg quality are closely linked, but let's hear your your take on it or typically like if a woman comes in and says to you, can I really improve my egg quality? Like I keep getting, you know, like I'm not making it to blastocyst or maybe I, sure. I'm not getting any PGS normals um, or I keep yeah. having miscarriages and they're chromosomally abnormal. What would you, what would you tell her? The answer is yes. So now, you know, w with the egg or with anything in the body, there is, there is two things. There is genetics, which every, we all know. It's like a code you're born with and that's it. And there is now something called epigenetics. And that's why I wanted to link both to talk about the air quality. Mm -hmm. The epigenetics, epi means above. And mm -hmm. epigenetics is above genetics. It's actually what controls the genes inside mm -hmm. the DNA. So I can have my fingers. If this is my code, that's great. I can put a ring, put a ring here. That's, that's, that's epigenetics. I'm yes. changing. Even though I have the same fingers, I'm changing how they look. You're changing yeah, the expression, right? That, exactly. Yeah, whether or not it, it, the phenotypic expression is what we say in the scientific world, but to all of you, it's whether or not like that disease is going to manifest or whether or not you're going to age before your time or maybe even delay the aging process, could we say? That's, yeah. that's right. So, so back to the egg quality, the egg yeah. maturation and, and egg quality, there is two parts for the egg. There is the nucleus, like the egg yeah. that we eat, the yolk and the white. Yeah. There is two parts of the maturation, the nucleus, which is the yolk, and the white, right? Both of them have to be good in order for the egg to have good quality. Now, the inside, which is the nucleus, that has the DNA, great. Right. But the outside that has mitochondria and other things, believe it or not, when a woman ages or has any problems, medical or whatever, the mitochondria get affected and mitochondria yep. af function can affect directly the, the epigenetics oh, on, yes. inside the yolk. So this is when things like, uh, you know, acupuncture, acupuncture, all that could improve the, the, uh, the outside. The egg white, the, the mitochondrial white, function. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, in order to improve the, 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 the outcome. Now, step back about epigenetics, things that we have that affect our expression and why you and I are different 
are a lot of it, even if we're twins, we can have different things due to the epigenetics. 100%. There is internal and external factors yeah. for any expression of a gene. Mm -hmm. And the internal we cannot change, but the external, right. such as smoking, lifestyle, uh, diet, polyutans, right. diet uh, obesity, uh, where you uh, live, like the chemicals you're exposed to at your workplace, right? So many, the bath and beauty products you use and the toxins you're exposed to 100%. So it's like nature versus nurture, really, you know, and the, the nurturing right. aspect, how you treat your body, how you live your life determines that epigenetic expression. Absolutely. And that's why even if you if I if I think if I clone you right now, Amy, yeah. I'm not doing, I wish I can do that, by the way. But if I clone... <laughs> we can clone each other and then we can go to that beach we were talking about this morning. <laughs> if I clone you <laughs> and then I put one, one let's say, um, in the United States and one Amy, let's say, uh, uh, in India eating, yes. uh, you know, eating only Indian food. Believe it or not, you both will have different health issues when you guys yeah. get older. Yeah. Right. Maybe the Amy in America will have maybe more diabetes, hypertension. I'm just giving examples. Maybe the one there will have more cancer because she was yeah. predisposed to whatever. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the, the epigenetic and the environment is very important. And hence, and let me tell you why, we, you know, this conversation we started it is I also get asked a lot, uh, women who want to use donor egg. They yeah. tell me, you know, again, I, I don't push patients for donor eggs ever because, you know, mm -hmm they have the right to use their own eggs. But when they start to that. say- Did you hear you guys hear that? Let's just pause for a second. That's tweetable. Because you have the right to use your own eggs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a tweetable I, moment. I like that. I yes. think so. But when they start to think about donor egg and you know they get emotional, that's not my, my, my genes and my, not my DNA. I say I respectfully disagree. And I write on a piece I of totally paper, disagree. worried about epigenetics. Because if I get egg from Amy and put it in someone who is- has medical problems, right? Let's say I put your egg, you're healthy, eat diet very well. I put your egg in someone who has, like, let's say diabetes, hypertension, smoker and all that stuff. That baby that's coming from that egg, because it's been exposed to that environment and because of the epigenetics that change the, the DNA expression will have different diseases or will, will be much worse than, than the same egg that grows inside your body. Having said that, you know, the environment inside the uterus does have an important role on the DNA expression. And if you we are- We talked about the child's palace today, guys. I told him about the child's palace and how it's like the vessel. You still have to prepare the vessel. Even if you did donor egg, it doesn't solve all the problems in a sense, you know? Right, right, exactly. So that's why, you know, I think, you know, patients, again, who are thinking about potentially using donor egg, they should, you know, in my opinion, to read, read more about the epigenetics, it's not just only about the DNA no. and which egg is coming from. You're having your partner's sperm, if you have a male partner, you're carrying that baby for nine months and, and you really are shaping- It becomes you. The, yeah, the, it really becomes you. shaping that embryo tremendously. Mm -hmm. So- Yeah, but, I always say so you're, just, right, you're just borrowing a couple cells. You're just jump-starting the thing, the situation, you know? If that's an option, you know, or if that's a desire for a woman, right. then I think it's- but it's still about, we still have to prepare for that transfer. We still have to prepare that vessel, make sure you're going to give the nutrition, you know. But I want to talk more about the, the yolk, if you will, the nucleus of the cell, because that's like the genetic material that's coming from mom and dad. So, and this is really even in my brain. So if that's like bad, if that's chromosomally abnormal, can that be altered by the whites being worked on does that mean am i making sense or is that more like heritable diseases like if if dad has like cerebral palsy or something like is that what it's more like so there is heritable diseases like yeah. like like sickle cell disease yeah. yeah and there are down syndrome which right. are problems with the egg division now gotcha. i want to yeah. explain this and this is very important for whoever is watching your eggs right now even if you're 60 years old they are, have normal yolk. It's 46 chromosomes. Now, as the egg, your 46 chromosomes, your husband is 46 chromosomes. Right. We need an embryo that is 46 chromosomes, correct? Now, mm -hmm. the ovaries and testicles are unique organ, and that's why they're called reproductive system, because they split the DNA into 223 chromosomes. Then 23 plus 23, they meet to make 46. a 46 chromosome. Yeah. Now, 
your eggs, even if you're six years old, have 46 chromosomes when the follicle is small. Got you. Okay. When the follicle starts to mature, when it reaches around 12 millimeters, mm -hmm. this is when the DNA, the, the white, remember the yes. white and the, and the yolk? Plays a role. White is actually what's responsible into splitting the DNA equally. Now, if so it's like when older, people say all my eggs are bad. It's like, no, that's actually not possible. Your they're eggs all are not actually, bad. They're all actually good right now. Good. But all as your they eggs mature, are good. Correct. All the your DNA eggs are good. I love as that. They, as they mature, yes. the white, if it's get, not good, impacted. it doesn't yes. split the, and now if it's splitting the DNA unequally, like cutting an apple, yes. a piece is bigger than the other. Now you have 24 and 22 instead of 23, and 23. Right. 24 plus 23 sperm, they make it, they become 47, which is Down syndrome. And that's the problem with aging. Now, yeah. improving the white or changing the white, think about it this way, the future, the future yeah, will be changing any woman, even right. exactly changing the white, even in a 60 year old can have a baby with her own egg because get a, get the white from someone much younger, 20 years old, you're 60 years old. Take oh, your, this your, is that, the white. that, what is it called? It's an implantation. What is it called? Um, it's called mitochondrial replacement therapy. Mitochondrial replacement. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or nuclear transfer. So we Nucle take yeah, your, okay. your, we heard about it yesterday. Your, uh -huh, and put it in a white of someone younger if you're six years old and the white that was coming from 20 year old fuse them, then mature it in the yes. lab, do in vitro maturation. Now the white is young, it's going, most likely it's going to split it equally into two 23 right. chromosomes. So that's what the future is going to be. That's but why. But then what, like, so what about ozone or PRP? Does that's that exactly have an impact on the white, do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Why we give a human growth hormone? We give a human growth yes. hormone. There are a lot of protocols, they use HGH. Human yes. growth hormone affect the white. It has IGF, it turns into IGF-1. That's important for the white. It makes it yes. some, because we have less growth hormone as we get older. Remember, we don't want right. growth hormone because I don't want to grow anymore. As it goes down, I'm replacing it. So now the eggs are happier. The white is happy. And this is how the PRP works. By the way, we had a second per patient today. I know. Jessica told me. You got Jessica It's so good. So good. <laughs> this, the, the PRP last month, just by sex alone, I swear to God. I, I can't even and tell you. And now old, 42. Anyway. Never been pregnant, right? Like 40, 42 years and eight months. Never been pregnant in her life. So, so uh, almost 43. 42 and eight months. Okay. She yeah. came for us to do serine ultrasound and office hysteroscopy, but we're doing urine pregnancy test before the procedure. Thank God we did it. And like, oh my God, it's positive. We did the PRP March 17th. She, she was like, no, no, you're joking. She's like, that's not mine. I'm like, it's yours. So we took blood, we ran it. It was 529, her ACG. Uh, such a good, oh. She's still in shock. I'm actually, you know, so two in, tw two, in two days, it's, it's yeah, after crazy. PRP. And these are both women that have been trying to conceive without success for years. And right? they didn't do IVF. They just had sex. Yeah, they didn't do IVF. So, so really, I'm, I'm very happy for both of them, really. But, but what so you think the PRP, know. it's amazing. The PRP then impacts the whites, if you will. Does it? Like the PRP is really impacting the, like the ovaries to, per, like to recruit more follicles, right? Or does it well, also? Yeah. There are three mechanisms and, and yeah. it's published. There is a lot of articles on it, both yeah. in, in basic science lab, animal studies and human so studies. Someone just asked, so mitochondrial replacement therapy, ozone and PRP, it's called platelet rich right. plasma. You right. can check out the information on Dr. Murphy's site, which is Rejuvenating Fertility Center, or just follow him and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, but so I always tell my patient, if you go to PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D, which is all the medical journals in the world are published there. There's a search place and you put PRP and ovaries, you'll see all the recent yeah. articles. So and PRP much. and uterus, you'll see. Now, the PRP does, it has a lot of growth factors. So it works through three mechanisms. Imagine, first, before we start, imagine your ovary is a lake and the eggs are the fish. As women get older, as these fish are getting older, the fish are throwing the you know poop and whatever in the in the water it's getting dirty toxins whatever wastes you know what i mean yeah uh-huh so cellular now debris water, yes so now the cellular debris thank you now <laughs> the, the the fish are living in a water that becomes dirty and muddy and they're not happy okay so the eggs are not happy now and imagine this lake has caviar what do you call the egg fish at the bottom okay now 
we put PRP in this lake, it does three things. One, it stimulates the fish mechanically to, to move. Right. Two, it precipitates some of this, some of this dirty uh, stuff in the water to, go. To, okay. make the, to make the water cleaner, if you want. And three, it turns the, the fish eggs into newer fish because ovaries have stem cells. And when you inject it, it turns stem cells into- See, and that, that is egg. like a whole other topic for another time, but like, you do not run out of eggs. Ovaries have stem cells and there's research to support this. So this whole right. notion of like, your eggs are all gone or they go away is, is not true. And there's data to support this. So it's about like activating them and-, um, and But I this is like how the hair loss work thing, you know, the yeah. stem cells here, you inject it, the stem cells turn into hair follicles. And that's yeah, how- so it's the same it's thing. So I know we're, we're going to try to wrap up in the next couple of minutes, but so like lifestyle, like things we can do now without mitochondrial replacement, if you will, to improve the white, improve that like outer area of the egg is, is obviously like diet, lifestyle, like the antioxidant supplements, Absolutely. things like PRP, ozone, right? Absolutely. That all can definitely, look, if, if each one of them, adds one to two percent to the quality yeah, yeah, of it, right. I will take it, right? I will yeah, take 100%. it. Yeah, percent. Now, 100%. and having said that, I have patients who smoked all their life and now they don't want to do anything. They want to stop smoking for a few months before they start. Yeah. And I say, y your eggs have already been exposed. They've been damaged, yeah. So yeah. what I'm trying to say is the damage, or the eggs have been there since you were born. Everything mm -hmm. you've done, and we're all the bad it things. impacts it. Yeah. We're all the bad things. Yes. Not me, <laughs> <It's>, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the good girl, please. Uh, so the, the, everything we've done throughout our life does affect the X because they've been there. So now yeah. stopping all of a sudden is not going to reverse mm -hmm. it immediately. That's no, what I, what I so, yeah. so, so that's, that's what I always say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's about, I, I say frequency and consistency. So it, it's, it's, you know, even if you do the best you can do, like 70%, you know what I mean? But then over time, the, the cumulative impact is, is major. Um, and I also think too, and, and you could, you know, correct me if I'm wrong or reword me, but that I do think you could get, you could go from 38 to 43 and actually at 43 have, make better quality eggs because you've kind of overturned all the cells in your body. Um, and reduced inflammation and improved Absolutely. mitochondrial function. Yeah. Well, there are studies on on twins, same you know, uh, same twins, and they you know when they studied those twins and they put them in different places and yep. they found that the genetics twenty to thirty percent only affected their their, yeah, their, their life, their and the rest was all epigenetics. I talk about that in my first book and my second book. Yeah, it's um, I find it fascinating, and I was telling you this morning that's kind of what Chinese medicine has been talking about for thousands of years. We call it postnatal essence, and it's like you're born with what you're born with, but what you take in from the world, like your food and your thoughts and your lifestyle and your you know the toxins you're exposed to and your stress levels and your sleep, and that impacts how you age. You know, so right. you can amplify that, you can degrade it, right? And so, um, it's it's a fine tune uh, machine. But this whole general statement that once you're 35, you fall off the fertile cliff and all your eggs no. are bad is um, is bullshit. No, actually, right? all your eggs are good, but yeah. when they mature, and we want to work on the maturation, and that's what so yeah. folliculogenesis. So even those hundred days of folliculogenesis impact that that white, right? That mitochondria. Right, function. but that's well. why different protocols, Amy, yields yes. different outcome. That's right. why we try different things. Why? Because the way you're maturing these follicles, especially right. the transition when they reach 8, 12 millimeter, yeah. that phase is extremely important. And that's why people say, oh, I did Lupron scale or this, or Antagonus or Clomid. That affect the white, does affect yes. the division. And too much shots, too much medication. Yeah. I agree, it's totally quality. To yeah. harm the white and to more likely, the DNA will split unequally. That's yeah. why people ask me, how can the stimulation affect the genetics? Well, it does. Because, because you are harming the white, that's a device abnormally, thus you're more likely to get genetically abnormal embryos. So you know what I say? I it's better. microwaving versus slow cooking. Like I like microwaving that. foods versus slow cooking. Like it's like you take your time, you're really like, oh, it's there such a good go. stock. You cook it down <laughs> versus zapping it in a microwave. That's you right. know, it's two different outcomes. That's um, right. Okay, so we have 
So I have something to get to, and he's had a long day. So I think um, maybe, so there's people asking, um, would you recommend PRP somewhere in Southern California? So there is a place in Southern, in, in San Diego that's doing PRP. Um, but we have girls that travel from California to get PRP with Dr. Murray. Yeah. Because his pricing is much better. I'll just say that. Like, I have girls all over the world, all over. I have a girl flying in from Paris to do PRP with him. I have, I've had someone come in from Texas. I have someone coming from Oregon, California. Um, so you, you, but you can find it in your area. I would just set, recommend shop around. Like, look at his site too. Even do a consult with him. Um, yeah, Gen 5. That's the place in SoCal. Um, thank you, Gianna. And then, um, let's see will conventional clinics start using prp or is it still on trial it's not on trial it's not on it's trial it's like everything else look egg freezing was experimental egg yes. freezing did not become mm -hmm. it's such a good point it's such a good point yes it was experimental until 2012 and this is when the srm said well now it's not experimental but people were freezing eggs 15 years before it became yes. official yes. by the srm mm -hmm. But yeah. this is how things start. So. Yeah, exactly. And you just need to build the, the data and the support for it. So this is what happens when, you're, when you go into perimenopause. I think that's when they go dormant, right? So like, like you were saying, there's like fish at the bottom of the sea, basically, or at the bottom of the lake. They just get dormant. They are, actually don't disappear. You still, that, and that's something you taught me of like, they don't, you don't, you don't run out of eggs. They just go dormant. No, you don't. Now, and once the, the, PRP, the ovaries, right, the ovaries wants to hold on to some of the eggs. That's why yes. women who are postmenopausal have still have eggs because once they reach around 1,000, the ovary doesn't want to give you any more to ovulate. They hold on to them. And, and this is the billion-dollar question as to why, why they hold on to these last 1,000 eggs. Yeah, and this so is what researchers are going crazy. It's like if we can have those eggs get activated, we can't ju just only delay menopause. We can also help people get pregnant. And trust me, the NIH have a lot of grants about menopause because when women stop ovulating and, and those eggs start to grow, less estrogen, there is more yeah. heart disease, a dementia. Yeah. Or well, that's it. Or all that. I almost so, think the PRP for, is like beneficial regardless if you're trying to get pregnant. It's like it's delaying ovarian aging in a sense, right? So it's, I think it's keeping things and, and the hormones, you know, more balanced and active. So we um, do have a paper just got accepted in uh, PRP and endometrial receptivity. It was, it was accepted in a journal wow. called Reprodu Reproductive Sciences last week. We, will, we can share it. We also submitted another paper on PRP and hot flashes. Uh, it's under review. As soon as it would, you know, once I hear from the journal, I keep you posted. But it's very interesting because some people don't want to take hormone replacement therapy because they can't. Yeah. And this is a good they have option. breast cancer yeah. or lupus yeah. or kidney yes. problems. Or they don't want to take hormones. Yeah. Doing PRP, believe it or not, you know, once you inject it, it activates not just the follicles, but also they produce more testosterone, DHEA, all that stuff um, from the ovary that can help the, all these symptoms, improve sex drive, and yeah. a lot of other things. But I'll share the paper with you once it gets um, hopefully. Yeah, I love it. And then, um, okay, well, last question. Would you do PRP to get more eggs before, before egg freezing? The answer is yes, a lot of people do that. There is multiple okay. studies, if you go to PubMed and look at them, that PRP double or triple the number of eggs. And that's why some people say, oh, you know, I'm not sure. Again, I'm, I don't tell people to, to have to do it. But when they ask me, I'm like, you actually might be saving money. If I'm doing egg retrieval yeah. and you're getting four eggs instead of two or 10 instead of five because you did the PRP in the beginning, you're doubling the number of eggs instead of having two cycles. You did one cycle and now you're done. Right. But, you know, it's... And yeah, there's a, there's a presentation in Yale and in, in the ASRM meeting in October 2019 when it was in Philadelphia. They actually showed that PRP tripled the number of eggs retrieved in women with very low ovarian reserve. So yeah. if you're tripling it, you're basically saving instead of three cycles, you're doing one cycle. You know. Right. So on. So so the answer is yes. A lot of people do it before. Um, and I have patients who do IVF in other clinics. They come to me just to do PRP before their IVF cycle somewhere uh -huh. else. Now, it doesn't work for everybody. I don't want to try yeah. to, I'm not, you know, I want to yeah, be not, straightforward. There's no guarantee. It's just like IVF doesn't work for it everybody. It might or might not but... work for you. I don't know yeah. until you try yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then, I'm going to let you go because you had a long day. Because and Kobe's I starting to, to get jealous. Kobe's like, ah. Oh, yeah. Your dog's dog. getting jealous. 
You go. I'll see you next week. Um, Bye, Amy. And nice talking we, to you. We do this again. We're doing this once a month, guys. So just keep joining in. Follow both of us on Instagram. Um, and, and if you have specific questions about this live, you can DM me or DM Dr. Murphy, and we will get back to you guys, okay? And he's also doing consults. Um, and like I said, my team is doing acupuncture uh, in his Westport Clinic, and we'll start in the 57th Street Clinic, too, at some point. So, um, yeah. Sure. Okay. Bye. I'll see you bye. later. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.